generation. They are not going to take any name for themselves to what God is going to do. They'll take no credit. They'll take no name. They'll give God all the glory. Amen. Amen. This is the nameless, faceless, selfless last generation that will rise up. God will bypass this corrupted first generation who are so self-centered, so conceited, so individualistic. Not the last generation, no. They will work together with one another. There will be team, team spirit, teamwork. And that is the group that Satan now wants to destroy. You see? It's not just a matter of what's wrong with gay people having a baby. They too need a family. It's, just, it's not something so innocent as that, you know. It is the total annihilation of the last day's move of God. We should not allow what happened in Moses' time and what happened in Bethlehem to be repeated again. Amen. Amen. You and I have this awesome responsibility to protect our children. Amen. 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 So let's come back to the conclusion of our study. The last day's anointing, the exceeding greatness of the powers of God that is going to be poured out upon the face of this earth so great that eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, neither has it entered into the mind of man the awesome greatness of the power of God, which has been kept hidden from eons of time, which the angels themselves have not seen yet. Such a move of the Holy Spirit. So, on the first night, I shared with you an introduction to this subject. And yesterday morning, I shared with you about what are the powers, the seven horns. Tonight is how can we receive them? How can we receive them? What should we do? How should we purpose ourselves to receive them? Exodus chapter 19 Verses 16 to 19. Then it came to pass on the third day in the morning that they, there were thunderings and lightnings and a thick cloud on the mountain and the sound of the trumpet or the voice of the trumpet was very loud so that all the people who were in the camp trembled. And Moses brought the people out of the camp to meet with God and they stood at the foot of the mountain. Now, Mount Sinai was completely in smoke because the Lord descended upon it in fire. Its smoke ascended like the smoke of a furnace and the whole mountain quaked greatly. And when the blast of the trumpet sounded long and became louder and louder, Moses spoke and God answered him by a voice. Now, this, is, this was the first time that God manifested his glory on Mount Sinai. Not just for one person or two person, but the whole Israelite nation of three million people saw with their own eyes the glory of God come down upon Mount Sinai. Now, if you look at this passage of scripture very carefully, uh, for the very first time, the triune God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit manifested themselves on Mount Sinai. If you look at verse 16, it says that there were thunderings and lightnings. Now, thunderings and lightnings are always associated with God the Father. And then a thick cloud that is associated with the Holy Spirit. And then come, came the voice of the trumpet. In Revelation chapter 1, we read about the Lord speaking to John, but it sounded like a trumpet speaking to John. 
So that was the voice of the Lord Jesus Christ. So you have the three, the triune God manifesting themselves before the whole of Israel for the first time. Now the Bible tells us in Daniel chapter 11 verse 32 that in the last days the people will do great exploits. Great exploits. How do you define them? We cannot define them because such an exploit has never been seen before. There's no precedence in history. Not in biblical history, nor church history. You'll never find any records of any great things that will be done in the last days for a sample in the Old Testament or New Testament on church history. No, there will not be any precedence. But look at that scripture very carefully. It says, and they who know God shall do great exploits. So before you can do great exploits for God, you must be a people who know God. Not just know about God, but have an intimate, experiential relationship with God. Not just a superficial knowledge. Not just a Sunday attendee Christian. Or once in a year, a conference attendee. Not all that. All that will just be like the foolish virgin. You know, the foolish virgin were also prepared to meet the bridegroom. Number one, the foolish virgin were also dressed. Number two, they also had the lamb. Similar to what the wise virgins. But there was only one minor difference. Everything else was the same. Only one minor difference. The foolish virgins took their salvation for granted. Took the coming of the bridegroom for granted. They were not prepared for tribulation. They were not prepared for the end times. They were not prepared what if the bridegroom delayed his coming. They were not prepared. They took their salvation for granted. They took their security for granted. They took their work with God for granted. They took their relationship with God for granted. They did not have a knowledge of the bridegroom or the knowledge of the master. They did not know the master's heartbeat. They did not know what is the burden of the Lord. They did not know. They were just everyday good Christians who come and go, that's all. Not beyond. If you want to walk with God in these last days, you know, if you missed this morning's service, you, fa you failed to hear an excellent message preached by Brother Neville Johnson about what we should do in these last days in preparation for the next final move of God. So you should get the CDs to listen to what we should do to prepare. Because that's where we are now, that at the threshold. We are at the starting block of the last lap. You are at the starting block. If you are standing at the starting block, then you must be a runner who has made themselves ready. You must have trained well. You must have taken your vitamins very well. You must have done your weight training very well. You must have known your race very well. As well as you should also know your competitors, their strength and their weakness. And you mark out your game. This is how I'm going to run. You should know the rules of the game. This is the way to run. You should know. You must come prepared. If you come unprepared, 
then you will fizzle out. Just like what happened to the Polish virgins. All the lamp fizzled out because they had no oil. So, the people that do know their God shall do exploits. So, before you can do any great exploits, you must be a people who walk with God. You must come into that relationship. You must be a seeker after God. Position yourself in a place, of a rightful place to receive. Now let me share with you. Don't ask for this gift, ask for that gift. Just quit all that. I show you a better way. You know, once there was a great kind king in India. You know, kings are always very rich because they own the whole land. So one day, this king decided to go for a walk to see how all his citizens are living. The kings in India in the olden days, they used to do that, you know. They disguise themselves and they'll just go out for a walk to see how people are living. So the king saw abject poverty in his country. He was so broken hearted. So when he came back, all through the night, he could not sleep. He was very sad for his subjects. Here he was sleeping in a golden palace, on a golden bed, golden wash basin, everything golden. Even the dog's kernel was golden, everything golden. And here the people outside who labor for him, who pay taxes, they are suffering. So after spending a sleepless night, the king decided, he made a royal proclamation. For the next seven days, the royal palace will have an open house. Anyone can come to the palace and just take anything they like. So as soon as the king made his royal proclamation, the whole country queued before the palace gate. And when the gates were open, they were all sent in one by one. So, and the king stood at the entrance to welcome everybody. People couldn't believe that they can simply get anything they want. So everyone who came, they asked, King, are you really sure? Say, yes, go, take anything you like. So, and the king had lots of riches for everybody. So everybody grabbed everything. Lastly, came one old grandma. So she came walking slowly and she looked at the king. She said, King, are you really sure I can take anything I see in this house? Yes, mother, anything. So she went around the whole palace. She came back to him. She repeated the question. King, are you really sure I can take anything I see in this house? Say, yes, mother, whatever. Whatever you can carry or even I can help you carry them. So she went around the palace. She came back to the king and said, King, are you really sure? You know, you all do that, no? Second confirmation, third confirmation. <laughs> and there are some people who ask for seven confirmations. So, the king repeated the same thing. He said, yes, mother. Let come, come, let come. Let me show you around. He showed all his treasuries. She said, mother, anything, anything. And the mother came back. She asked him one more time. Oh, great king, please do not be upset or angry with me. Are you really sure I can take anything that I see in this house? He said, yes, mother, anything. Immediately she grabbed the king. And she said, I'm taking you home. <laughs> you know, the rest of the people took something. But when the king comes with you, everything of the king comes together with you. <laughs> Amen. So, don't ask for this one spirit or that one spirit or this spirit. No. Ask for the Lord himself. 
when the lord comes all the seven spirits and more comes together with you amen amen you know there was one little boy who went to market with his mother and this is a little boy seven year old boy you know so they went gross uh, to a grocer and uh, while the mother was busy shopping this boy was just looking at all the candy bottles like all little children do that no even big adults do that <laughs> don't laugh don't you do that <laughs> right so this boy was just looking at all the candies and the shopkeeper looked at the the grocer looked at the boy said oh, take whatever you like so he said no sir i don't want and he was very surprised how is it that a little boy doesn't the candies so the mother was buying a lot of stuff and again he repeated his offer son take any candies that you like he said no sir so when the mother was paying the bill again the grocer asked him son take anything he said no sir no sir so the grocer then put his hand into the candy jar and grabbed whatever that came into his hands and put in the boy's hands and he lifted up both his hands and grabbed all the candies very happily so as they were walking home the mother asked him why did you not take the candy in the first place so the boy told the mother mummy my hand is very small <laughs> you understand In the same way, don't be, don't be just grab this, grab that. Wait for the master to give. Wait for the master to give. When he gives, he gives you all. Amen. So what must you do? Number one, be a seeker after God. Seek God with all your heart. Seek to know Him. Seek to know His ways. Seek to know His mind. Seek to know His burden. Seek to know what is heavy on His heart for your community, for your city, for your church, for your town, for your nation. Ask Him, Lord, I want to know You, and the power of Your resurrection, and the fellowships of Your sufferings. so that i may be made conformable unto your death so that i can also attain the resurrection that was the cry in the apostle paul's heart that i may know him that's the first desire second was then the power of his resurrection but first i may know him you know if you read exodus chapter 24 verses 15 to 18 before moses had an awesome privilege of being caught up into the heavens to be with god for 40 days and 40 nights before that happened the bible tells us he waited on god for 6 complete days just waiting for god to come and visit him and he never left that place where he was supposed to meet god he just stayed there he did not leave that place stayed in that presence for six complete days day and night because god said come and wait and god did not say how long what would you and i have done if we were there that day after 10 minutes okay you didn't show up let me go <laughs> right let's be honest see this is the reason why we are not having any breakthroughs in our lives this is the reason why we are not able to enter into the glory we are not ready only our mouth proclaims that it wants all this just the mouth proclaims but the heart really doesn't want never shared this morning how he emphasized very very deeply on this one point 
how we should be heavenly minded. That's how you should be heavenly minded. Then you'll have the breakthrough. If 23 hours and 55 minutes of the day you give to the world, you're so earthly minded and just five minutes of the day you try to get heavenly minded. How is it possible? Will it work? It won't work. It should be the reverse. 23 hours and 55 minutes heavenly minded and then just five minutes for meal times. <laughs> Become little earthly minded. We need to realign our priorities. Realign, realign. Realign, reset our priorities and our orders in the right perspective. Once you do that, then on the seventh day, Moses heard a voice, come up and he stepped into the cloud. And then from the seventh day to the 40th day, he beheld the glory of God day and night. 24 hours continuously, God talked with him. That is why the Bible says, there was no one like Moses whom God knew face to face. No one. Two times, 40 days and 40 nights, he was in heaven with God. Continuously. No one had that kind of a privilege. But it is possible for you to have that privilege. Now look at Acts chapter 1 verse 14. It tells us 120 disciples sought God in prayer for the fulfillment of the Pentecost promise. And they sought God. The Lord said, wait. And they prayed and they prayed and they prayed. It was one continuous long 10 days of prayer. They didn't know it's going to last till the day of Pentecost. The Lord just said, just wait. So from the day that the Lord Jesus Christ got resurrected, you see, from the death of the Lord Jesus Christ till the Holy Spirit fell, it was exactly the 50th day on the Feast of Pentecost when the Holy Spirit fell upon the waiting disciples and they all sought God day and night. And look at Elijah. You know, we admire Elijah so much. He was a prophet who called on fire. If you read 1 Kings chapter 17 verse 1 and chapter 18 verse 15, he declares that I stand in the presence of God. For him to declare that he was a seeker after God, spending his time always in prayer, waiting on God, meditating the word of God, was standing in the presence of God before he could do great exploits for God. He was a seeker after God. His whole heart's passion was God. Nothing else. If, if we can cut away all these things that so easily pull us down. You know, concerning Elijah... There is no record about his father, mother, neither anything about his family background. You know what this shows? There was nothing that was pulling him down to the earth. He was not bounded, no weights attached to his leg that was pulling him down. No weights. That doesn't mean you cannot get married or have a family. You can have all that. You are in this world, but not of this world. In this world. But you're not of this world. The Lord Jesus when he was on this earth. He had a mother. He had a father who died shortly. So we'll put the father aside. He had a mother. And his natural born brothers and sisters. Family. But when he left the home. To do the ministry. Even when his mother came to see him. He couldn't be bothered to pay any attention to his mother. Right? Many times when the mother came to see him, he said, 
Who's my mother? Can you imagine looking at him and say, who's my mother? If I ever said that to my mother, she'll give me a good back slap. <laughs> I tried imagining once, you know. <laughs> she would have given me a good slap on the face. You mean, who am I? But look at the Lord Jesus. Who's my mother? Who's my father? Then he pointed his hand at all his disciples. They who do the will of God. They are my mother. They are my father. They are my brothers. They are my siblings. They are the ones. His heart was after God. Secondly, pray for this promise to come to pass in your life. Zechariah chapter 10 verse 1. It counsels us to pray for the letter rain. We have been promised the letter rain. Say, pray. Pray that the Lord will pour forth the letter rain at the time when it should rain. Pray. Pray earnestly. You know, when the Lord Jesus Christ counseled the disciples, say, stay in Jerusalem. Wait until you be endured with power from on high. He said, wait. Don't get out of this place. Wait here. Stay united in unity. Pray collectively as a church. Pray, gather together often as possible. And pray earnestly. Hosea chapter 6 verse 3. He says, I will come to you as the former rain and as the latter rain. So you pray, Lord, you promise that you will come to us as the former rain and as the latter rain. So where is your coming? You pray earnestly. Cry earnestly to the Lord. Lord, we want you. Don't just ask for the rain, you know. Ask for the Lord of the rain. Amen. We want you, Lord. We want you, Lord. We want you. You know, if you read Exodus chapter 33, God was very upset with Israel. So he told Moses, I will send my presence with you that will go before you. Immediately Moses will fall down on the ground and he will cry to God, Lord, no. I don't want your presence, Lord. I don't want your angel. I want you to go with us, Lord. I'm not satisfied with an angel. Angels are good. It, it gives you goosebumps. Good. But no, not an angel, Lord. I want you. We want you. That should be your heart cry. You know, an angel, as glorious as he is, is but a servant of the Lord. He's not the Lord. He's a servant. So why are you so hot after his servant when the master himself is available? Remember the story about the king and the woman. If you grab the king... All the servants, all the friends of the king will come together to, be, to your house. Amen. Amen. All the king's men, all the king's servants, all the king's friends, they also come to you. You know the Lord has many friends. The sons of God in heaven. All the living creatures in heaven, they'll all come to your house because... You have become well favored of the king. Once you become well favored of the king, the whole of heaven will welcome you with open arms. So your desire and pursuit should be the Lord himself rather than all the gifts. Amen. Amen. Number three. You must be a follower of the Lamb of God. Revelation chapter 14, verse 1 to 5. The Apostle John sees the last day's company, the 144,000 on Mount Sinai, or sorry, on Mount Zion, together with the Lamb. And it says that these people followed the Lamb wherever he went. So why is the Lord Jesus Christ 
portrayed as a lamb 26 times in the book of Revelation. Only once he was mentioned as the lion of the tribe of Judah. Only once, lion. But 26 times as the lamb. You know, in order for you to have the power like a lamb, you must first have the nature of a lamb. Oh, sorry. It, before you can have the power like a lion, you must first have the nature of a lamb. What is the nature of a lamb? It's obedient, sacrificial, loyal, submissive, it's without guile, pure, and faultless. That's a lamb. You must 